Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today we're going to talk about two tools that you might not be using too much, the histogram and the levels. And if you're a photographer, you know all about these, so don't worry about it. But illustrators sometimes don't. So you can find them in Window, Histogram, and then Levels is a command. But I'm going to open that up simultaneously, and you can see that they have very similar information. And all you're seeing with this chart is a representation of the value range in your image. Because as I've said tons of times on the site, the values of your image are extremely important. This just proceeds from the darks on the left side, the lights on the right side, and the midtones in the middle. And the taller the spike on the graph is, the more of that value is in your image. So for me, I've got a lot of midtones in this painting. You can see there's almost no high values, and there are some low values, but not too many. So the levels is actually a way to alter the value structure inside of your painting. The histogram is just like a indicator. It's always going to be telling you what you're currently looking at. So here, if I wanted to increase the contrast, I could use levels to do that. Here, I could move this right point in closer towards the image. And what that does is it clamps and says, okay, the new highest value possible is what used to be like 70%. So now what was once 70% is now 100%. I could do the same with the darks. Now you can see here the histogram is updating. There's a little ghosted image of what it used to be. That spike that was just about 50% has now shifted over to the right. So if I were to confirm this, the histogram would update. Now there is a different value arrangement inside of my image. And if I'll undo that real quick, you can see the difference. So now this is a tighter grouping around the center of the value range. That means it is generally lower contrast. And it's important to know that what the histogram is showing is actually only the selection. So right now it's the entire image, but if I were to draw a little lasso around this center bit here, it would change and update to only show the value arrangement inside of the selection. So really you could just use this as sort of a diagnostic tool. Well, beyond simply understanding the value arrangement in your piece, there are some definite technical applications of this. Like when it comes to overlaying a layer for texture, it's good to understand how the value range of that overlay is going to interact with the blending mode. So let's say I wanted to put these waves over top of my image to give the ocean a little bit of texture. Well, if I were to just drag that on top here and set it to an overlay blending mode, which is a good one for textural overlays, you can see it has a darkening effect. So if I hide the overlay, it is a lighter value, and this is a bit darker. Now generally when I want to do an overlay, I don't want to change the value arrangement of the piece. I painted the water a certain way and I want it to stay that way. Well I know that overlay works best if the values of the textural overlay center around 50%. So I'll open up levels, and I see the spike here is a little left of 50%. Well, what I want to do is change this value relationship to center it on 50%. So here, if you're watching the histogram, I can change these values until it becomes 50%. And then if I edit it further, I could lower the contrast. And I would do that with the output levels. I would bring those together. So here you see I have a tall spike on the histogram in the center about 50%. That means I have a low contrast image that is essentially a neutral change as far as the overlay blending mode is concerned. So now when I put this over my image, set it to overlay, you can see it has much less overall change because it is low contrast at 50%. It's not really changing the value of my ocean. I painted the ocean a certain value. This just gives it a little bit of textural subtlety, but it's not going to change my image. So in this case, understanding the histogram helped me make this textural overlay much more useful. And the more you use Photoshop, the more you'll understand when it's important to use the histogram and simply how to read it. So get to know your histogram and have fun. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.